Hi guys, my name is Joan and welcome to Freebie Table. I have Elonge and Yana with me on this, on this table. We are bringing social media to television and here we talk about all the trendy topics that are happening on social media and we just try to, you know, understand it better. But you know what? From Manu, Manu Dibango's death to coronavirus and then the Yukon's one year marriage crash, we'll be right back with so much more. All right, guys, welcome back. If you're just catching up, this is Freaky Table. I've got lots of things to talk about. First up, Manu Dibango. The great Manu Dibango is no more. And he passed away March 20, 24th in France from uh, the very famous coronavirus. But why is his legacy a bitter sweet taste on Cameroonians and their tongues? So many people are talking, but it's not so good, isn't it? Elonge and Yana in the building. I'm so sorry about you know you guys losing a <clears throat> very famous musician, artist, great saxophonist. I mean, he was such a great man, isn't it? Was he? I mean, no, you're just shaking your head. I don't know what it was. I miss Manu Dibango. It was. It was. Manu Dibango's legacy is it, it transcends Cameroon. Yeah. Um, I think that he himself understood that. Um, if you if you if you if you read his autobiography, um, three kilos of coffee, mm -hmm. um, you you start you start realizing that he was doing music for the world. He wasn't doing music to be confined by environment. Mm -hmm. In fact, he he came up with the with the term negropolitan, which is essentially Afro-European, to to talk about his root is cosmopolitanism. Mm -hmm. So, um, Madibel's music essentially is an embodiment of his own experiences. He left Cameroon when he was just 15, went to France, um, studied in France. You know, three kilos of coffee essentially is what he carried to France to pay for his first term in boarding school. So uh, his, his influence from Quincy Jones um, to Pete Bacardi to uh, um, people like um, Fela Kuti, Bob Marley, Richard Bona, it, 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 just name it, the list goes on and on. And perhaps that's why uh, I don't think we have any Cameroonian in the entertainment industry that is more influential, that has been more influential on the world stage than Manu Dibango. So why is it, why is his legacy leaving this bitter sweet taste on, on the tongues of Cameroonians? Because so many criticisms come like, oh yeah, he had a great music career mm. for himself and perhaps his family. And, and he's been recognized internationally by this great music. I mean, even Michael Jackson picked up something from him. Rihanna did the same. And I read Princess Joe's um, tribute to him, which was really great. But why are Cameroonians, person on the street, not feeling Manu Dibango the way they should? What is lacking in that legacy? Manu Dibango himself said that one of the things he regretted most mm -hmm. was not being able to be as impactful as he would have loved to be within Cameroon. Mm -hmm. um, he operated in other African countries. Um, the blame partly is on the, the environment and the government in which he was operating. Remember that Manu Bago actually noted that um, he operated particularly under the Aijo regime, yeah. where there was a lot of censorship, and his work was under heavy surveillance, such that when he came back to Cameroon in 1963, you know, after being in Europe, France, Brussels, came back to Cameroon, he opened a bar, he, 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 he started an art institute, but he closed all of that because he realized that his music, he had to use a lot of innuendos, he had to virtually dilute it, mm -hmm. you know, so he had to go back. His wife even told him that uh, he can be of more, more help to Cameroonians by being out of Cameroon. So was he? You know, was he? Did you feel like, if they asked like, I know there was a young man who asked me like, what, what music did he do? And I was like, well, how old are you? And he said 29. I was like, so you don't know him? He said, I know him, but what music did he do? So do you feel the same way or? I mean, partly because obviously it's Manuri Bango. I mean, he's, he's had but it, I think I'll talk about it from a, from a very soft point of view in terms of the fact that he's influenced people's musical taste. Mm -hmm. And it's also influenced how they produce and we also um, uh, play around with music because you find people like Joe too, like he said, Big Bagadi was open one of the biggest record labels in Cameroon. I mean, once you are able to influence one person and able to also um, influence other artists and other careers, that's, that's also part of it. It doesn't have to be structured. I mean, structures can be both soft and hard, which yeah. is built and everything, but then he's done it in terms of impacting human lives, which is great. I mean, it's, it's, it, it could have been better, but then it's, it's equally as great. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, if we're looking at people like, I mean, for someone who inflamed Michael Jackson, Michael Jackson was hardly someone who could take anything from anyone. I mean, 
I mean, but MJ, he did. you I know. Mean, the mama yeah. said, Mama said, Mama, from his 1972 song, So Makosa. Yeah. And, and, and then he even went on to have a Grammy nomination. I've never heard a Cameroonian Grammy nomination. No, Richard Bonner has Grammy something. Grammy in 1974, right. too. He was actually nominated twice, mm -hmm. which is really great for him as, a, as, as, a, as an artist. But I'm still looking for that point. Like, is it that young people do not feel his brand genre of music that much as compared to like hip hop, pop, R&B, or like, what I was think, the problem? I think music taste is, is transient, you know, um, the way we consume music now mm -hmm. and the sound of it is, yeah. is different from mm -hmm. listening to the saxophone. <laughs> you know, they, I mean, it's, it's, it's completely different what we have now as sound and that. So it's, it's first of all a generational thing to me. Yeah. You know, I, I particularly know Manjibar because of the, the largeness of who the person is, but not necessarily because of his music, essentially. Yeah. But the symbolism that is attached to being Manjibar mm -hmm. and how big Manjibar single-handedly put Cameroon on the map musically, mm -hmm. you know, and Africa on the, on the map musically. But I want to emphasize on some of the, the, the this foundational element of our music mm. and our 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 environment musical environment wherein you take um, a country like like um, um, ivory coast using manu dibango as the head of the uh, national opera this is hufer Bwani using him as the head of the of but, why but do Cameroon Cameroon cannot. Wait, wait, why do Cameroonians <laughs> always have this syndrome of being famous outside the country because the system doesn't help i mean it's a and, and, and that's the other thing. I mean, there were people yeah. who went social on social media and lambasted a guy like he died, you know, like a wretch, like a wretch and stuff. His music, no impact. But why does Cameroonians have this? this syndrome or this practice of always shining outside the country instead of I mean, you explain yourself. Look at, the, look at the state of the country. I mean, even the entertainment industry itself, it doesn't, it, it's, it's not the way it's supposed to be because you have a lot of drawbacks within, just within the country and it doesn't help. No, when, where are the structures for a saxophonist? He has never even trained any Cameroonian that we know of. Maybe there are someone hidden somewhere. Uh, yes. But there, there's no place where he's been trained as a Cameroonian who say that who beat his chest and say, Manu Dibangu is the one that but I will tell you about producers who influence his music. Who influence, who, who, Not that he wasn't a great saxophone. You know, yeah. He was one of, in fact, Africa's best, I would say. Yeah. Like, Spotify yeah. actually described him as Africa's best known jazz saxophonist. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that made him like a huge person. But I did not really feel that he used his music to change lives. That's the part. Mm -hmm. Maybe he did that back in the 90s when he was a younger man. But I mean, now. I think we need to understand something about Manu Dibango's music because now we are in the social media age where we have, like Elijah like said, music, music, music artists um, um, differ according to age and time. And Manu Dibango operated at a time where there was no social media. There was just CRTV radio and then CRTV and TV. That was it. So if you could impact people and in people's musical artists from that period, I mean, that's, that's, that's and, quite and huge. Sure it's not, I mean, they're, they're they, older. Their musicians are like, okay, not, not so old as, yeah. as, as him, but close to him. They're mm -hmm. older, like 60s and 70s. Mm -hmm. We still, we feel them, that they're in Hollywood. We still feel them. But man, you cannot say that Manu Zimbabwe is a Cameroonian. So you know, you know, social media, he was a fan. No, I'm so, he should have had a better PR team to actually, you know, channel this. Okay, fine, I agree with that. I'm just saying. Back to Cameroon and to the youth yes. to make us feel him better. I think that PR, like our... But I, I also think that the media has the challenge of documenting and archiving our heroes. Yep. You see, if you if you have Very media true. that focuses on only the wrong thing, that is so politicized that they cannot actually, you know, uh, 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 document the life of Manu Dibango, then it tells you a lot. Everything that you find about Manu Dibango is done by the foreign press and not the, the Cameroonian press. Of course, when you, the Cameroonian press, actually wants to talk about him, then you find people like CY International, make him fool out of himself. But, but there's also something I'd like to talk about, especially about his, his legacy and how impactful it was. I think, especially on young artists, in, in, in a way, he's, he's shown them the way to, to do music. Mm -hmm. Because I think in 2020, we're not in the music business, business anymore. Mm -hmm. We're in the content-based business. If you look at Manu Dibango's music, it moves from playing sound, I think the popular soundtrack on CRTV News, 8.30 or 7.30. That's Manu Dibango's yeah. sound. I think they've changed it now. Mm -hmm. Then also, he influenced also soundtracks to documentaries and also lifestyle shows. Good music school. Yeah, so even, even with um, Toyota and Big, he, has, he, he produced this, the commercial school. songs to yeah. those to those to those um, to those um, um, ad adverts. So it shows how how you need to diversify your musical your musical output. Basically, it's true. yeah. It's true, but that goes down to every artist who is a Cameroonian right yep. now. Listen, please, we know that you do music, you're good at your craft, but please do enough for your community so that you can be remembered not just for the craft, 
but how much impact you had on other people's lives. Yep. So moving on, we have obviously the very great coronavirus dampening the growth of <sighs> the payments in Cameroon, and that is crazy. Next. meet us some other time soon but remember to follow us on all social media platforms at Decoded TV Show and also watch the show and subscribe to Decoded TV Show on YouTube.